Hey everybody, thanks so much for joining us. I almost forgot to unmute myself there. Um, so today we're going to be doing a, a webinar about our Neural Nexus Matrix Array uh, that's going to be given by our head engineer Carlos uh, Rackham. So we have started a new format. Uh, we're doing webinars every other week now, uh, now that more companies are open and everybody's a little bit busier. We're um, slowing down the webinar, the weekly webinar, to moving it to every two weeks. I also wanted to mention that uh, we're sponsoring FENS. FENS starts uh, the 11th. So look for our uh, virtual booth. We're gonna be having a virtual booth during FENS that you can come check out and ask us questions. Um, and upcoming webinars we have on the uh, 23rd, we have a new a Lego update. Our developers have been working very hard. We have a bunch of exciting new features to, to show everyone for a Lego. If you don't know, that's our software for our smart box, and you don't actually have to have the smart box to, to use it. You can use it with your uh, acquisition system and use it for spike sorting or whatnot. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and start the webinar. Hello, my name is Carlos Rackham, Senior Technician Engineer for Neural Nexus Technology. And today I am presenting on the Matrix Array product family line. I am going to give a quick introduction to myself, talk about the origins and history behind the Matrix Array, help guide customers in buying the right of Matrix Array for their experiment, which will, in, which will include the family Matrix Array products, tips when ordering, specialized matrix arrays, testing adapters, accessories, what to expect in your first purchase, and if we have time, questions. My goal today is to inform the customers out there on how the matrix array may now suit their experimental needs. I have been with NeuroNexus Technologies for 11 years. I've had roles as R&D senior technician, production manager, safety manager. But in those 11 years, I have worked on helping develop the three-dimensional probe for short and long-term use. The origins behind the matrix array started with the 3D probe. It was our first attempt at making a three-dimensional probe. At the time, we were combining two of our thin film technologies, silicon probe and our polyimid cables. It had a ZIF or Hiroche connector, flexible PCB, metal housing, hybrid cables, guide rod, shim probe stack, and our silicon probes. There were issues that led to poor assembly yields, unreliable connectors on the flexible PCB. So we developed the second version 3D probe. Changing the PCB from a flex to a rigid PCB allowed for a better connection between PCB and connector. Again, we were using the ZIF connector, moved to the rigid PCBs, now had modular sub-assemblies, which was great for pre-testing, hybrid cables, guide rod, shim probe stack, and our silicon probes. Still, there was one issue we had to address. And it wasn't the channel count, as we saw that with the version 3, the 3D probe, which introduced the first 128 channel 3D probe. It was one of NeuroNexus' first 128 channel probe we had developed. With this package came two new things. First was the Y bracket. This allowed us to attach two 64 channels PCBs to the Y bracket and which allowed us to run four 32 channel probes to the probe stack. With all these probes and connectors, as some of you have, might have already ordered a matrix, seen this uh, scheme where we have A1, A2, B1, B2. 
And this is to help the customer in knowing which probe would go to which connector. So if the customer just wants to test with the middle probe, they could go to B1 on the connector, plug their head stage in, and activate or record from the probe B1 down below. It also had the ZIF connector, rigid PCB, guide rod, shim probe stack, and our silicon probes. Yet there was still one issue with the probe stack. Our ideal probe stack would look like this, where we had four 16-channel A-style probes placed in shims that would equally space out the probes 200 microns apart. We had to deal with the one uh, negative limitation for chronic use, and that was the height of the probe stack when inserted was too high for long-term study. As you can see in this illustration, the probe stack had a back end of five millimeters. So even though the probe shanks were inserted into the brain, you would have between, say, 4.6 to 4.5 millimeters sticking outside the skull, which would make it difficult for a skull cap to be replaced, which could lead to the animal getting an infection or damaging the probes themselves. So we had to reimagine the 3D probe. And before we could tighten up the alignment, tolerance, and space, we had to develop a new probe to deal with the height issue for chronic use. So we developed the first M-style probe. As you can see, the A-style probe in the other slide showed that the back end with the 32 channel was up to five millimeters. With this new M-style probe, we have reduced the back end, so now it is uh, a half a millimeter in length. Now that we had the M-style probe, we had to have a holder to be able to hold the uh, probes in perfect alignment and perfect spacing. So we developed the matrix array platform. It now had a plus or minus four micron tolerance side to side. As you can see here, the probes are perfectly aligned, as well as a plus or minus four micron tolerance between probes. Here is illustrated a four by 600 uh, micron platform. And as you can see, the probes are equally spaced 600, millimeter, 600 microns apart. So now we had our probe and platform. We had to come up with a package. So we started with some concepts. We had the 3D 128 4 by 32 ZIF package, the 3D 128 Cerebus package, and the 3D 4 by 32 Omnetics package. They all had their uh, pros and cons. For example, the Serapis package, the con would be obviously the size. It would be limited to certain animals. So we had developed the acute and chronic matrix array. The acute matrix array 128 now had four or two rigid PCBs with four omnetics connectors attached to the Y bracket. It had a guide rod cap that was attached to our platform technology using our M-style probes, new hybrid cables that we still use in the newest designs today, allow for modular testing, and a new way to ship the matrix array without damaging the probes. The chronic matrix array version one utilized a new skull mount system. The key to the chronic matrix array is the skull mount, which allowed the skull mount to be permanently attached to the skull and then a package placed onto the skull mount. Then over time, as the package grew old and failed, a new, it could be removed and a new skull mount or a new package could be placed on the skull mount, limiting the animal's exposure to more surgeries. It also used the rigid PCBs and amnetics connectors, which you cannot see in this illustration as there is a cover over it. We utilized the platform technology, the M-style probe, new hybrid cables, allow for the modular testing, uh, new ways to ship the array without damaging the probes, 
and most important, we reduce the size of the package. The design had in mind ease of assembly as well as handling the wear and tear of the animals. We have continuously improved on the matrix of the chronic matrix array. Some of these improvements were customer driven, as you can see in version four, where the customer wanted more options for bone screws. So we grew out the legs, allowing for several options for bone screws to be attached to the skull mount. Other improvements were cap related, where a customer would wanted a cap with the screws to be uh, not removable, so when they test, they wouldn't lose the screws. So we um, added captive screws to the cap, so when they did remove the cap, they could test and easily put the cap back without having to uh, look for screws and uh, reattach them. Other uh, improvements help the assembly yield. As you can see in this package, we've added a front wall as well as a back wall for better access during assembly which improved assembly yields. Eventually it evolved into the HD, high density, or matrix HD 128. As you can see with this package, we have now allowed for a high density testing adapter to be threaded onto the cylinder, cylinder package. We moved from a square package to this shape package, so the primates were able to have something to grab onto like an edge, which could cause it to damage the probe or the animal itself. But the most important thing that this package allowed us to do was take the four, plat four probes in those single platform and now split them between two platforms. So we now had the dual platform, which allowed for two 32 channel probes in one platform and two 32 channels in the other platform. So if a customer wanted to have a craniotomy and two platforms not in one spot but in two locations, they could put these platforms side by side or if the experiment, um, the experimenter needed two craniotomies in two different locations on the skull, one platform could be in one craniotomy as the other could be in the other craniotomy. We also uh, created the high density testing adapters, which I will get into in a second. Now the customer buying guide to the matrix array. Next, I'll be talking about all the product lines, the specialized matrix array, testing adapters, accessories, and what to expect in your first purchase. Over the years of developing the matrix array, we have slowly created a matrix array products to meet all different customer needs. Hence the big bang of matrix array products. Now we have products that could meet small animal needs, medium animal needs, and large animal needs, as well as our queue could span all, all across all three animal sizes. And still there were more matrix arrays out there. But before I get into all the packages, I would like to dive deep, a little deeper into the probe itself. The M-style probe allowed for different site arrangements. You could have a tetro site arrangement, a poly two site arrangement, or a poly three site arrangement, even a Buzaki arrangement, linear arrangement, or as you see in this illustration, edge arrangement. It also allowed us to still have four shanks or two shanks, which if you had the two shanks, then it would be a two by 16. Next, we offered different site materials. We offered gold, platinum, iridium, platinum iridium, and iridium oxide. We also offered a range of shank lengths, ranging from two millimeters to 15 millimeters. Plus, we offered one more process, and that is sharpening our tips. We have a process now to sharpen our tips to a point of 10 microns. And what this did was prevented dimpling when inserting into the brain. Beforehand, if inserting this probe, 
it would cause dimpling, which could cause the shank to buckle, which could lead to failure of the probe. So now with our sharpening process, we can now slide, insert these probes smoothly into the brain. Now our platforms. We have a variety of platforms. We have the two by 300 micron platform, which houses two 32 channel probes. We also have a four by 300 platform that houses four 32 channel probes. We offer this four by 600 as well as a four by a thousand. And for those 256 channel matrix arrays, we do offer a three by or a eight by 300 platform, which houses eight 32 channel probes. Now, we also offer platforms not shown are the four by 200 micron and the four by 800 microns. And as if, as you notice, and if you have noticed here, all these platforms have two micron, two millimeter length probes. But if you notice the thousand has a five millimeter probe. The 600 is by coincidence. But the reason I bring this to your attention as our first buying tip. When deciding on a platform, which would dictate your spacing and the probe, if one is thinking long shanks, they must consider the spacing between probes. For example, if one wanted a four by 200 micron spacing platform and wanted a five millimeter long shank probe, this would not be recommended. For as you have narrow spacing between your probes and long probes, what happens is as the probe is being lowered towards the brain, brain fluid will wick onto this um, probes and the surface tension will bring the probes together. And so then as you go to insert the probe, one or two options will happen. First, you might be able to get it into the brain, but then your distance of 200 microns may now be 100 to 10 microns apart. But the most likely outcome will be, it'll end up damaging the probe during insertion. So we recommend if you are looking into a four by three or four by 200 or a four by 300, that we recommend probe shanks no longer than three millimeters. Now let's get into the products. First, starting with the matrix array, the acute matrix array product. Animals used are small and or large and even medium. We have an MA64. Now the MA stands for matrix acute and the 64 is referring to the channel count. We also have the MA128 Y bracket as well as the MA128W bracket. Now the MA64 has a housing made from a 3D printed polymer. It has a stainless steel two millimeter IST rod, which this length could be customized. That is one thing with our matrix array is it offers quite a bit of customization to these products. It has a one millimeter guide rod one silicon platform, the uh, two polyimid cables. Now here you see a, a range of length, and this is dictated by your cable length. So our standard is 20 millimeters, but a customer could request up to 50 millimeters, which would also and then increase your guide rod uh, length, and that's why I had length to vary for the guide rod. It is insulated with epoxy coating. Now the MA 128 Y bracket offers a unique thing. As you can see down here, we have a degree of 37 between the inner connectors and the insertion rod or IST rod. And this allowed for a bigger footprint for a head stage to be attached to this, to these connectors without the uh, IST rod getting in the way. It is made from an aluminum 3D printed material Again, using the IST rod, the one millimeter meter, uh, diameter guide rod, a platform. But as we moved up in channel counts, we have now four silicon, or we have four silicon probes and four polyimid cables. Again, the standard length between package and platform is 20, but we can customize it up to 50 millimeters. It has four omnetics connectors and again is insulated in epoxy. 
Now the MA128W bracket, as you can see by its profile here, it allows for the connector to be vertical. So if you have a heavy head stage or your profile of your surgery needs a narrow probe, this offers it without angling the connectors out. It is great for the SmartLink 64 as well. Again, it's made from an aluminum 3D printed material, two millimeter IST rod and one millimeter guide rod, one platform for silicon probes and for polyimid cables. It also has epoxy coating to insulate it. Now moving on to the small animal matrix ray products. First, we have the MH64 and the MH128. Again, the M stands for matrix. The H now stands for hybrid series. Again, the channel count is the 64 and 128. We also offer the MCM matrix and the 64 and the MCM 128, our first cableless matrix product. Starting with the MH64. The material is again a 3D printed polymer. It has two polyimid cables. Our standard length here is 25, but it can be customized up to 50 millimeters. We have one platform, one, two silicon probes, two amnetics connectors that are 32 channels each, epoxy coating, and we recommend this product be attached to the skull using bone or dental cement. The 128, the H128, again has the standard length between platform and package of 25 millimeters. The housing is again a 3D printed polymer. This time it has four polyimid cables, one platform, four silicon probes, and four 32 amnetics connectors. And again, it is recommended that it be attached using dental cement. Now we have the MCM64, which is our first cableless matrix array. This package is stemmed from the MC package. That's where you get the MC, and then the M is obviously matrix. It is a case made from a 3D printed polymer. It has one platform, two silicon probes, two amnetics connectors, epoxy coating sealing the whole interior electronics. And again, it is also recommended to use dental cement attaching it to the skull. But this package does offer one, out, one other accessory. And that is the two millimeter MCM64 IST rod for insertion. Here you place the package into the holder, placing the front plate on, and then attaching this either to our Neural Nexus IST motor or a customer's uh, choice of manipulator. They lower the package down so the platform and the probes or the probes are inserted into the brain and then they can dental cement the package to the skull, remove the front plate and then raise the holder. So left behind is the MCM64 attached to the skull. We offer this in the 128 version. Again, it's a polymer 3D printed case, one platform, four silicon probes, four 32 channel amnetics connectors, epoxy coating to seal the electronics. As well, it is recommended to be attached again to the skull with dental or bone cement. And again, it does have its own two millimeter MCM 120 IST rod. And again, the two millimeter is just referring to the diameter of the rod. Now we have the, M, the medium animal matrix array products, which are for cats, marmosets, animals along those sizes. And they include the MHS64 and the MHS128. Again, the M is for matrix, the H is for hybrid series, but the S isn't for series, but rather strength. And as we get into these larger animals, it means the product is gonna take a little more wear and tear from the animal. So now the housing is made from either a 3D printed aluminum or titanium metal, one uh, platform, two polyimid cables. Uh, again, the standard length is 25 millimeters can be customized up to 50 millimeters, two silicon probes, two amnetics connectors, 
epoxy coating, and again, it would be attached to the skull using bone or dental cement. Now with the MH-128, the housing has wrapped around the interiors. And again, it is made from an aluminum or 3D material, one platform. Our standard distance between platform and housing is 25, customized up to 50. Four silicon probes, four amnetics connectors. Epoxy is now inside the housing to better insulate the electronics. As well, it needs to be dental cemented to the skull. And we've added these two, mil two millimeter, sorry, two millimeter feet that stick out that are one millimeter thick. As well as there are cap that can be placed on top of this. And this is what this hole is for, where a screw can be withdrawn out, locking the cap into place. Now for our large animal matrix arrays. We have the MHD-128 SP and the MHD-128 DP. The, again, the M stands for matrix, the HD stands for high density, the 128 is our channel count, and now the SP stands for single platform or dual platform. We also offer it in the 256 channel version. Then we have the MHD-128 LP, SP, and the MHD-128 LP, DP. And the LP now stands for low profile, as I will get into that in just a second. We also offer this in the 256 channel versions. But before I get to these packages, I'd like to discuss the MHD skull mount or pedestal. The uh, MHD skull mount works with both the MHD 128 packages and the MHD 256. And the thinking behind this is we didn't want to have to have the customer have two different skull mounts out there. So, for instance, if you wanted, started your experiment and you just wanted to see how the 128 worked, you could attach this to the skull mount and use it. And then over time, you realized you would like to increase your channel count. You could remove this package and then slide on an MHD 256 package. It is made from titanium. It allows for 10 bone screws. We do offer bone screws through gray matter research, but if you choose to use your own bone screw, just keep in mind that it has to have a diameter smaller than the 8.25 millimeters. We also have three M2 flathead screws, which I'll talk to in a second. Our legs are one millimeter thick, bendable to help conform to the skull, as well as they can be trimmed and we do offer tools to allow you to trim that. And the reason and thinking behind that is if you have two experiments that you need the packages really close together, together, but the feet are preventing them from being placed in that arrangement, you can trim down the feet or even remove the feet, which we offer a shear tool and then a file to smooth down any sharp edges before it's attached to the skull. <clears throat> And now how this uh, skull mount works is you have your pre-attached skull mount to the skull. You lower the package onto the skull mount and then you insert the three M2 flathead screws through the package and threading into the skull mount, locking the package tempor temporary to the skull mount. As you can see here. So now let me, let's dive into the packages. The MHS 128SP has a 3D printed titanium housing, the skull mount, which is made from titanium, one platform. And now with these large animal, we realize that there is a lot of effort in either training the monkey, preparing the monkey, or even just the expense of having a monkey. So, um, we have created now our polyamid cables that have our proprietary insulation for longer to for longer use, as well as our silicon probes have the proprietary insulation as well for longer use. And being 128 channels, we have both four of these proprietary cables and four of these proprietary uh, silicon probes. 
Our standard length is 35 millimeters. We can also customize that. The housing is 16 millimeters in diameter with a thread for the adapters to attach. And then it also uses bone screws. Also, one thing I want to uh, point out is, as you can see here, there is a uh, shim that is embedded into the platform. And what this is for is to ensure a better seal between the backing pick when you are inserting the platform, which I'll get into in a little bit, and to the platform itself. We're also looking in ways to molding the actual epoxy so the needle tips can fit securely and a little divigated by the mold. Now the MHD-128 offers two platform arrangements, which each platform will have two 32 channel probes. Again, it's using our proprietary cables and silicon probes, as well as using bone screws. The height of this package is 20.63 millimeters. And yes, you could vary platforms if you wanted to. So say you wanted a 600 micron platform here and maybe half that distance here, you could have a 600 micron platform and then a 300 micron platform. Now the MHD 256 is very similar to the 128 SP. Again, it has the 3D printed titanium housing, uses the exact same skull mount, but it does have the standard eight by 300 micron platform, which houses the eight 32 channel platforms. Again, we're using that proprietary cables and probes, uh, bone screws. But one thing I do want to bring to you guys' attention is now that we have a higher channel count, our PCB did grow in size. So we had to increase the housing up to 18 millimeters. We also offer this in the dual packet, our dual platform, which now you would have a full platform of four 32 channel probes, which would each platform would then equal 128 channels. Again, our standard length is 35 millimeters and can be customized. One thing I just want to address, again, bring to your attention is this height of 20 millimeters, 0.63. And the reason I bring that up is for our next package, the MHD-128 LPSP. And as you can see in this height, we have reduced the height to by six millimeters. But in doing so, the customer will be giving up the skull mount for a dental cement attachment. Again, it is made from a 3D printed housing, one platform, four proprietary cables, four proprietary probes, Again, the size for this is 16 millimeters in diameter, which allows you to use the same testing adapter as you have in the MH-128. We also offered in dual platforms. Again, each platform would only have two 32 channel probes. Again, also um, the standard distance between platform and housing is 35 millimeters, which can once again, be customized. Now we have the MHD 256 LPSP. Um, it's still made from the titanium 3D printed housing. Again, it's using the three by or the eight by 300 micron platform. But as you see, we did increase our diameter size. But in doing so, we did not have to increase the actual height size. So that is a bonus with this package is we still get to shave off that six millimeters without having that increase the diameter. Or I mean, without the diameter affecting the height. Again, it is using a proprietary cables and probes as well as our standard length is 35. And again, it is offered in the dual platform. Again, each platform holds 128 channels standard length is 35 millimeters. Now I'd like to move to our specialized matrix array products. And these are always fun because it's 
customer driven. We take their ideas, ideas and make it into a reality. For example, we have the MHD 128-256 and the MHD 128-256 LP. And a customer wanted to up, add a surface array. So now we have it with an ECOG. Other co customers wanted to see a D drive incorporated in the matrix. So we have the MH64 D drive. Other customers wanted to see a wireless matrix. So now we have the MHW128-256. And other customers would like to see um, other technologies merged in with the platform, just like the, a, um, the D drive. And so now we have the OMA-128. And this year we're actually working on the OMHD-128-256. And again, these are all, all these products are driven by the customers out there for their needs for a certain experiments. So if you do have an idea, that is one of the unique and special things about NeuroNexus is our ability to customize our arrays to meet our customer needs. So if you have an idea out there, please get a hold of our sales team or myself and we will be glad to work through these ideas. So let's dive into some of these uh, specialized matrix arrays. We have the MHD matrix array with ECOG. Here we have an MHD 128. And as you can see, the customer won an ECOG with this matrix array. So we attached a ECOG to the bottom of the platform. And we have two arrangements. We have one, as you can see here, where we have sites around the penetrating probes as well as we have them between the probes themselves. We also offer a ECOG where all the sites just surround the penetrating probes. One thing to take note when we do this ECOG matrix array that the customer will be giving up one of the probes. As you can see both of these illustrations, there are only three 32 channel probes. And it's been, the fourth probe has been replaced with the 32 channel ECOG, hence that's how we get the 128. We have had this package super customized, as you can see in our next example, where the customer wanted two 32 channel ECOG, a custom platform for a um, more of a distance between probes. And they wanted a 32, or a 64 M style probe, so we developed a new M style 36 channel probe. Here the customer wanted three of them, which gave us 96 channels, and then the two 32 channel ECOGs, we are now up to the 256 channel count. Now here we have the uh, MH64 D drive, and we have took the D drive with all its same components, so the, the probes can be driven at the same resolution as the regular D drive, but what we added was the platform technology and probes as well as the MH64 package. Now we could do a 128 version of this, but one would have to realize as then now we're limiting, eliminating the small animal as the package would grow in size. Next we had a customer come to us wanting to make a wireless matrix array and they found a company that they wanted us to use their EQ wireless technology and merge it with our matrix technology. And one other request which we um, offer is the MRI compatibility. The customer also wanted this package to be MRI compatible. And yes, we do offer it to all our other packages as well. We also have taken other technologies from NeuroNexus and merged it with the uh, matrix technology. Here we have the optogenetics merged with the matrix uh, MA128. As you can see here, we have our uh, ferrule for the light source to be attached. A fiber is run through the center of this package, out through the platform between the two inner probes just above the site so the light can radiate down upon the site's glow. And as I um, had said earlier, this year we are working on the 
MHD 128 and 256. And here is a concept drawing of a version of this where we have a ECOG actually involved as well, where we have a fiber running off to a ferrule housing. Inside here is a ferrule. We have a shipping collar that the ferrule housing mounts to. And this shows how much detail we really think about when uh, packaging these arrays because they are expensive and we want to make sure they did, that they do get to the customer. So the customer could remove the ferrule housing, either attaching it to the near the skull mount or wherever the surgery dictates it to be attached to. Now we've talked about all our um, products out here. Now how can we test them? So we offer a variety of testing adapters. We offer the SmartLink 64, which works with packages like the MA, the MCM, MH, the MHS, and the HDMPX128 4 by 32 mm uh, adapter. Next, we will uh, talk about uh, the adapters that are compatible with the MHD128 and 256 in the MHD 128 um, 256 LP. Here we have the HD MTX 128 service where it has a collar as you noticed on the MHD packages there was a thread this collar was thread onto the matrix array. We offer it in the M or the HD MTX 128 zip connector we also offer a HD MTX 128 smart box adapter, which would attach to our smart box probe, probe, excuse me, which has the amplifiers on the um, adapter themselves for recording purposes only. Then we have our most popular adapter, which is the HD MTX 128 4x32 Onetics with a six millimeter pitch. And here you can see the six millimeter pitch refers to the pitch between the connectors. It also offers a ground and reference post with a jumper switch to either turn them on or off. And then we also offer a version where the pitch between the two connectors are closer. So you could in fact plug in a SmartLink 64. Tools we have are the wrench, which will slide on the metal collar and the torque wrench to help tighten the adapter to the correct amount of pressure. We also offer it in a 256 version, as you can see here, which also includes a, a smart box uh, version as well. Now accessories. We have two important accessories that we um, one, we definitely push for the success for our products being used in experiments. The first one I'd like to talk about is our IST motor. Here we have a computer controlled uh, IST motor that drives a, a rod down that has a vacuum tip attached to a vacuum pump that will allow the platform to be sucked up to the uh, to the uh, vacuum tip and then the motor can drive at a controlled rate or pre-programmed uh, rate into the skull. With the IST motor comes the vacuum hose, vacuum pick, the vacuum pump with adjustable vacuum and the software to control the motor. The next important uh, accessory offer is the surgical training device. Now this surgical training device is print, has a 3D polymer printed housing, but it does have the actual polyimic cables as well as a loaded platform with probes inside of them. And this is packaged just like you would receive your functional device. And the reason we do that is we want the customer to use this device, learn how to handle the cable and platform, how to unload it from your shipping package, knowing your limits with cables in regard to how far you can pull before you break it because we'd rather have you break this device than your expensive functional device. 
We also offer skull mount kits, which has a two millimeter diameter drill bit with a collar to prevent the drill bit in going too deep, damaging too much of the skull or actually piercing the brain. And then, like I said before, we do have a partnership with Gray Matter Research where we use their gray matter screws to have a special patent on them. They are come in lengths of 3.1 millimeters and 4.1 millimeters. And finally, we do offer a range of tool kits depending on type of package you buy. For example, if you buy the MHD package and you need to modify your skull mount, we offer shears here to trim the legs and then a file to uh, sand any sharp edges, as well as we offer pliers to help bend and conform the legs. We offer tools to handle the platform and cables, as well as tools to unload the packages and spare parts. We also offer ETO sterilization. So if the customer wants to order a package, they've already ordered a matrix package, but they don't want to spend a day in-house sterilizing them. We have the option to sterilize your package so it's sent out to you. It can be brought into the surgery room, opened up, and then being used. Along those lines, we also offer on-site surgical and or experimental support where Dr. Better will be glad to come out to your laboratory and help any way to make your first implantation a successful one. Now, what to expect with your first order? You can obviously expect your matrix array. And as you can see, this is how we ship our arrays where our platform is loaded into a shipping cap with a shipping cover and then a bracket holding the whole package. Again, you will, with every first order, every customer the first time orders a matrix array will have a surgical device. And as you can see here, it is packaged the exact same way where there is a shipping cap, shipping cover, and the platform is inside here. And the one other thing you will receive with every matrix array <clears throat> is your matrix array positioning device. And example of this is, as you can see, this is an MHD 128 here is the same type of housing that could slide onto a skull mount. It has one cable, the correct length to the matrix array, functional matrix array that you receive, a platform with no probes, so you don't have to worry about probes being broken. And the purpose of this is you could mount this on the skull mount, take this over to your animal, and where you plan the craniotomy to be, you can now have a distance and measurement of where you want the skull mount or even the package, if it's like a low profile, you can take that package, set it on there, place the platform where the craniotomy would be. And so this um, device is to help better plan your procedure for surgeries. We'll also offer the toolkit uh, dictated by the type of uh, matrix array package you buy, as well as you will get an implant manual and a data sheet. Thank you for your time, and now if there are any questions, I'd be glad to answer them. All right, thanks. Thanks so much, Carlos. That was great. Um, I did just want to mention, he went through a lot of technical um, information here, a lot of sizes, materials. Um, you know, uh, don't feel like that you need to decide you know, do I need the HDMTX128 or the MHD128? I mean, the fact is you can you could send us an email and say, you know, um, I'm studying cortical layers in a mouse. Uh, can you design a matrix for me? And absolutely we can. Um, so that looks like it for questions. Uh, just a reminder, in two weeks, we're going to be doing a, in a Lego uh, presentation with uh, Asiya um, Goblat. Uh, I think I murdered her name, but I do it every time. So, uh, and uh, yeah, we have a lot of new features, so that's going to be a really good one. And thank you very much for joining. And a couple people we will expect to hear from us. Uh, we'll get back to you through email. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Carlos.
Thank you, guys.